Well, greetings. Uh, my name is The Adipose, and welcome to my eye draw tutorial part four. Um, today we're going to be making something that looks a little bit like this. A, a flower and a bee uh, um, using um, a variety of new tools that I haven't used in previous um, tutorials, um, such as um, converting nodes from uh, rounded to square, we're looking at brush types, um, improving gradients, um, and a whole bunch of other things as well. So let's get straight into it. I've got a new document and uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I am going to put a background in. Now in the previous video you can put a background in by going up here um, but I'm actually going to put one in um, using a shape um, today for variety's sake. Now you might be thinking well hang on a minute if you if you put a, in a background using a shape won't that mean it'll move it around all the time? Well not necessarily. I'm going to put in a gradient, uh, one of the preset gradients like this which goes white, blue, black. Um, but I don't want it black, I want it white, blue, white. So I'm just going to edit that by clicking on that, that black one and turning that back uh, to white and then we can come back and I've got my nice little background. Now say I didn't like the angle as much um, I can change that by clicking the the angle button at the bottom and you'll see as I do it the the back, the, the, uh, the shape in the background will change. Now say I didn't like the, uh, the the kind of the stripe and I wanted more blue and less white well I could do that by maybe duplicate by um, making another uh, point in the middle. See, I've got I've got like white, white, blue. And if I make this one the same blue, and I can do that by making a copy of that blue. So I, just, I went into the original blue, dragged it down into there, and then I'm going back into the other one, and I'm going to select that blue there. And I've now got, I can now make that slightly wider, um, so the white isn't so the white stripe isn't quite as extreme. Uh, which I think is quite nice. So there's our little kind of a our, our background. Now, if I now start kind of pulling other shapes around or trying to drag a shape. I'll show you, I'll show you why this might be a problem. If I um, um, just draw a red circle like that and then I want to kind of select something by drawing a big kind of box over it, it actually then moves the background which is a pain, which is a pain. So what we need to do is go up to this uh, top section up here, the, the square one, and there's a little padlock bottom left. Can you see that padlock there? You click that, it locks the object in place and that now means I can draw boxes and it won't then grab that shape. So we've got our background in place and uh, we're ready to um, start work on our flower and our bee. And we're going to work on the flower first. Now, we're going to make, we're going to draw ourselves a yellow star. And um, the star, you, you, you can, if you haven't seen my tutorials before, by the way, um, you can always tell which tool I'm using by which tool is highlighted in blue on the left. And sometimes I'll adjust some of these options at the bottom. Now, depending on how many... Uh, uh, parts you want of your flower, you can change that in star points, but I'm going to leave it on um, five, and I'm also going to make sure it's got a black outline, which it has all has got already. And so I'm just going to pull out um, my little star. There it is. Now that's far too big, so um, we're going to shrink it by pulling in the 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 ends there. And remember, because this is a vector drawing, it doesn't actually matter how big or small it is, it won't ever lose any kind of quality. In fact, we could make this the tiniest drawing in the world, and it would actually be the same uh, quality as it would be if it was the largest drawing in the world, because that's how vectors work. It's a maths-based drawing, not a uh, uh, like a graphics-based drawing. But this doesn't look like a flower, this looks like a star. We need to change some, some of these pointed ones to being rounded, so I'm just going to zoom in a bit. Now, pick the node tool which is the one I've currently highlighted and then if you look at the bottom um, we've got three options one which is an arrow one which is an arrow plus which allows you to select more than one at a time and then we've got this weird one at the end which is uh, looks like a kind of half a little hat or something like that and that's the one we need and you can see I've selected it there and um, select the shape now when you've got this tool selected if you click on one of these nodes and pull out to the side, it will convert from being a pointed node to a rounded node. Watch this. I'm going to do it to the uh, the point that's sticking out on the top right. I'm just going to drag out like that. Oh, there we go. And you can see um, that it's now converted into a into a round one. Now I, that was slightly hard to see just because of the um, the background that was in place because the the outline is actually blue. So contrary to my previous uh, suggestion. I'm just going to unlock my background and just put it out of the way for a minute. We'll, we can we'll easily put it back later. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing again. I've got my node tool, got that weird little hat thing selected. And can you now see that blue little line that's being pulled out? That's As I pull that out, that's going to convert these into curves. And I can do that all the way around. 
Supposing, for example, I wanted to, I wanted to do something the other way. Instead of just pulling out on it, I could actually um, just tap um, tap the the same one. So if I watch this, if I tap this here, it'll convert back from being a circle one to a line one. Watch. Look at that. Pull it out. Tap it back. You can even then, once you've pulled it out, just all to one side. So I pull it out, and then if I just grab one of those little blue balls, if I wanted, I could adjust the shape like that. Now, we don't need to do that for our particular flower, um, but there may be other shapes where you do wish to use that. For example, there's quite a nice little... That would make quite a nice little flower shape if I adjusted all the curves to look like that. Uh, but I'm, I'm just going to go for a, for a cheesy, rounded flower for this particular picture. Um, and I'm not going to worry too much about making it completely even, because I want this kind of slightly haphazard feeling. And I'm going to make my little... Uh, red middle uh, using the the circle tool uh, there it is let's make sure that's roughly in the middle and then I'm gonna get my node tool again this time using the normal uh, tool I'm gonna pull the little the the middle nodes back in to make my flower a bit more um, petally and if you don't know what I'm doing here um, do have a look at the previous tutorials because I've covered these ideas, but hopefully it's fairly self-explanatory. Now, I'm actually going to copy this shape because I want to make a kind of an inner an inner flower, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. Now, if I just use the tools up here that says copy and paste, um, it will kind of appear at a random... Uh, if, I, if I just copy and, copy and paste, it'll appear at a random point. If I paste it in place, it will appear exactly on top of the one that I've already made. So I'm going to go copy, and I'm going to go paste. So we've now got two flowers uh, right on top of each other. Now I want to resize the one on top, but if I use these top tools here by dragging the uh, the top left um, bubble, it'll move off to the side. And I don't want it off to the side. I actually want it to remain exactly where it is um, when I'm when I'm shrinking it. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm actually going to go into the shrink tool, which you'll see is the one that's now currently highlighted in blue. And um, I can choose how much I want to change it horizontally and vertically. Now I want to change it horizontally and vertically by the same amount because I want all the proportions to be the same, just smaller. So I'm going to click 80%, 80% and click scale and we've now got a smaller flower um, that's in the same place as the one um, above it. I'm then going to change that from being a yellow flower to being a light orange one and I'm going to get rid of that outline um, on this inner shape and now I need to move it back so I need it behind that red ball but in front of the flower and if you click this top right little object here you've got this order which I've discussed in previous tutorials and if I go too far then it'll disappear and if I go too far forward it'll go um, in front of the red ball so we want it just in the middle um, like that and then if we select off that you'll see we've now got a, a nicer kind of flower looking shape now we need to give ourselves a little stem now there's a few ways of doing this I mean I could just do a kind of straight rectangle plonk um, but we want something a little bit more artistic so we're going to go to the brush tool um, over here and the brush tool basically kind of gives you these kind of big these lovely little lines and you can choose how smooth you want these lines uh, with this with, with this one called smoothing here if I have the smoothing quite low and I write my name so if I could put Addy um, it looks pretty cool but it's it's still very much my handwriting if I undo all that and then put the smoothing a lot higher it'll give my it'll make my handwriting very very neat and uh, it'll smooth out every little bit that I write um, so it's a, it's, a, it's a very cool little tool but you always need to kind of select the, the right amount of smoothing um, for what you are currently doing now I am going to just draw in the stem a slight curve like that and then we can edit it afterwards by we will we'll select it and we'll We'll kind of go up here now we can choose the brush that we wanted for some reason it doesn't let you choose the brush before you draw it. you have to choose the brush afterwards uh, which is a little bit frustrating um but we can choose which what type if we want a big fat round brush whether we want it sloped that way slope that way slope that way etc and you'll you'll notice that the different brushes will have a different effect on the the shape different parts will be thicker and thinner see that one for example is thicker at the top when it's pushing down towards the left and it's thinner at the bottom when it's going around to the right this one will be the opposite, thinner at the top when it's coming down to the left and thicker at the bottom. Um, it's all subtle, but the thicker I make it, the more pronounced the uh, the more pronounced the effect is. And I can actually quite like having um, a thick top and a thin bottom um, for this particular one, and we should make it nice and thick. Now, I don't want um, a too thick outline, although this hasn't actually got an outline. Um, but I will convert it to a dark green colour that I saved earlier. Oops, no, that's the wrong one. Um, it needs to be the outline colour for now. Um, we might come back to that one a little bit later and adjust it if we have time in the tutorial, but we'll just change the order 
to put it behind what we've got already. Beautiful. Okay, now we need to look at we need to look at our B, and the B is going to be made uh, with just a couple of circles. Um, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out my B shape. There it is, and we're going to use gradients again to give him that kind of striped effect. Um, so I'm going to go into gradient fill, and I'm going to make my left one is a yellow, and I'm going to make my right one. Um, black, which in fact it already is. Now, what we need, of course, we need to do now is add a bunch more to our shape. So, which I'm just going to pull out roughly in position. When you create a whole bunch, they kind of all appear on top of each other. Um, so, I suggest you just kind of pull them out to an even position and get them out. Now, what I'm actually going to do here is I'm not going to go yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black, yellow, black. I'm actually going to go yellow, black, black, yellow, yellow, black, black. And I'll show you why. Um, if I go yellow black yellow you'll see we've got this kind of it slowly goes to black and then it slowly glows black to yellow uh, which looks okay but it all kind of looks a bit mucky um, and in certain colors it, it, certain objects that would be brilliant if you think about the, the circles you made in the last tutorial then that's exactly what you want um, but not here um, so we're going to go back to edit that gradient and I'm actually going to go yellow black black then yellow now what that allows us to do is to make a far neater transition still with a little bit of gradient but not nearly as um, uh, slow as the one before it's actually going to go a lot quicker so I'm just going to go yellow yellow black black oops missed black and then yellow and by positioning these uh, oops I've done that one twice and um, positioning these carefully I can get a uh, 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 the transition between them is going to be a lot more strict. Can you see those? Can you see those stripes there? Getting a nicer effect and stripes that I prefer on my shape, which is pretty cool. Okay, now we're going to do our, our the head of our B. Um, we don't want that big stripe on it. We actually just want the the the, the subtle yellow. So we'll pull that into place, and then we're going to go back to that brush tool that we used before. We're going to make sure the the smoothing is. Um, still quite high and I'm going to add on some little kind of feelers like that and note that my, my particular drawing might, might be a bit kind of random but because of the lovely um, smoothing effect it will sort that out um, for us which is pretty cool and I'm going to add on a nice little smile as well if of course you can edit these afterwards so I'm actually going to uh, change my brush and uh, just make it a little bit kind of thicker or thinner as I go um, to give myself my, my, my be a nice little smile and then I'm going to make one of those little um, uh, eyeballs that we made in the monster tutorial right at the uh, or right on the very first one um, I'm just gonna do it nice and nice and quickly with not a lot of care has to be said uh, we've got a, an, uh, we've got a black eyeball with a black pupil which is gonna be a little bit smaller than that and remember of course you can zoom in as much as you need to whoops and then you can do that thing where you accidentally drag it across the place so there's our eyeball I'm gonna copy that paste it once it's pasted it's already in the right kind of place so I'm just gonna um, drag that across onto our cute little B there he is and then we'll grab the original eyeball and pull that across slightly to the left um, there we are and there's our little B now our B needs wings now we're going to use that technique we learned earlier to do this we're going to make some kind of slightly grayish blue wings um, I'm going to pull it a circle out to kind of an, a horizontal oval like that and then uh, make sure it's got an outline um, to do that we need to turn, turn the stroke back up think of the stroke back up and we're going to make it slightly transparent because um, bees wings are I believe slightly transparent because that will be nice when it shows up against the bee um, but we're actually going to you go back into that node tool um, with that third one along the one that changes it from being curved to straight and just going to tap those ends which will make it uh, kind of like eyeball shaped, I guess, to an extent, or realistic eyeball shaped. And then we can go back to the uh, the normal select tool. We can rotate it around a little bit, change the the size and shape of it. Um, copy, paste, put the second one in place as well. To probably change the angle to make it slightly more um, vertical looking, and then change the order back to front to put that behind. Um, the body and if we then kind of scroll out you see we've got that kind of wing effect on the bee so let's have a look at where we are at we've got our little flower with double 
uh, double double petals. Uh, we've got our stem and we've got our B. Now let's put our background back in place to see how the um, what effect we have got. And if we now zoom in, oh, we'll, we'll lock the background in place using that padlock now. And if we now zoom in, we can see we're actually almost at our, our final design, um, which is looking quite nicely. However, I would like to look at that stem. Now this is a, again, this is a slightly new, so apologies um, if, if uh, you haven't done this before, but um, you, this is actually, the stem is just a single line, for example, just with a paintbrush, it was just a single line like that. It's not a shape, it's just a line, but you can convert a line to a shape. And that's what I'm gonna do here, because I can't put an outline around a line. Um, it's because it already is a line. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that stem like that, and then I'm going to go up to the uh, the top options. And I think it's in modify. Here we go. There's an option here halfway down the page that says outline stroke. And what that's going to do is change it from being just a line or a stroke in their language to being a shape, which is then outlined. Um, so we're going to click outline stroke. And if we now go into the uh, the node tool, you can see that this is now an outlined shape, just like um, any other object. And what we can do then is we can give it a black outline. And if the black line outline doesn't appear, that's because it needs um, the you need, you need to add it on. If the brush looks weird, um, just change it to the default brush by clicking that um, diagonal transparent one there. And you can, then you can choose how thick you want it to be. And I think the default is two. And you can now see that stems looking a, a, a lot better. And I can then uh, go to arrange and put it behind the flower, but in front of the background. And then by rearranging my hand there to make sure everything else on the screen, uh, we have got a little bee who is after his first meal of the day. The only thing I haven't added here is the petals, but I think with all of the uh, tools we have used today, you can work out how to do that for yourselves. Um, I hope you found this tutorial useful. If you did, then please do give the video a like and do subscribe for um, art tutorials, gaming tutorials, mod videos, and loads of other stuff as well. And if you've got any questions or suggestions for tutorials that you'd like to see about iDraw, then do stick them in the comment section. Thanks for watching, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.